My name is Anna Itkin and this is my business partner Marissa Agrasut. We're really happy to be here today and in this session we're going to talk about the strategic business potential of circular economy. A little bit about our practice. Uh, we set it up six years ago. It's a sustainability-led innovation practice, the Inceptory. It is women-founded and led. We're based in Singapore while working globally. We're a multidisciplinary team of professionals and practitioners coming from design and innovation, science, business, and work across different commercial entities from multinationals, governments, small medium enterprises, and NGOs. Our areas of practice are innovation, corporate learning for sustainability, circular economy strategy, and business model innovation. So why are we here today talking about circular economy? Well, in the world of today, there are a number of pressing issues that are prompting everyone to think differently and to see how we can move from business as usual. One such driver is growing regulatory and market, are growing mar regulatory and market pressures globally, as well as particularly in, uh, from European Union and China. And there is a growing ambition to meet climate goals as well as responsible production and consumption in our economy in line with international global agreements and nationally set targets. Environmental, social and governance rules are becoming increasingly important for resource and mining industry. The recent, recent results uh, from a survey just published in January this year showed uh, that ESG is by far the top issue, whereby 45.4 high-level stakeholders indicated that that's the case for them, while um, COVID-19 induced supply chain disruptions ranked at thir second uh, with 13.6%. Global disruptive changes uh, accumulating around the world while we're grappling with the effects of climate change, rising inequality, social instability, political instability, um, as well as the fallouts from the global pandemic. One of the uh, additional drivers are ambitious young generation of family business, uh, from family business owners, second generation, who are looking forward to take over uh, the business, but they are concerned from uh, the rising challenges. And while they want to meet uh, and maintain the goals and values of their family, they're also looking with worry towards into the world of volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous reality for businesses. One of the most important drivers is material criticality. In the current world of global economy, it which is modern and highly technology driven, the dependence on resources keeps rising. And one distinct feature of critical materials arises because of economic importance to the industries and particular economies where uh, they're located, as well as availability, physical availability that can be um, can be under risk due to uh, many different uh, factors that are coming into play. So these are all drivers that are kind of putting out their different ideas of how can we uh, address a current reality. We live in a time of unprecedented economic prosperity and uh, what we're looking at here on the first part of the slide is the key socioeconomic trends. Now, some might say that these are some indicators of progress. Um, and you can see some of these indicators are things like transport use, telecoms, fertilizer consumption, world population, as well as urban populations. The second part shows the key earth system trends. Now, this has indicators such as greenhouse gas emissions, ocean acidification, tropical forest loss, and biosphere de degradation. The red lines show the time around the 1950s where, as you can see, there is a correlation between both the socio-economic trends and the key earth system trends and showing the start of what we see as exponential growth. For better or worse, the scale of and speed of change of human and business activity is significant. 
This is resulting in profound consequences for our environment, the planet and its ecosystems. And it's been suggested that we need to decouple our socio-economic growth from our key Earth system. With continuous economic growth and technological development, the demand for resources is increasing and supply chain disruptions are predicted, especially for certain materials that are critical in the sectors such as renewable energy, but also high-tech products and specialized equipment. Trade, uh, in this uh, infographic you can see that trade in uh, material resources such as biomass, fossil fuels, metals and minerals has grown strongly over the past half century and the volume of trade increased in a faster pace than the volume of extracted resources. And it is this growing dependency of the global economy on material resources uh, that is concerning. As at, in 2017, the global physical trade amounted at 11 billion tons. But if we zoom out, we can also see the additional resources that are needed to produce these traded uh, final uh, traded products. And an orange uh, circle indicates the indirect and or embodied materials in trade. And it far exceeds by a factor of three, the direct volume of materials uh, that is being uh, traded across nations. The, great, the gray circle indicates the volume of all the upstream resources needed to uh, produce the trade materials. And this includes energy, water, land use uh, in the country of origin, whereby they're left after the goods are produced, these are left as waste and emissions in those countries and can serve as proxies for the ecological impact of trade. This next slide shows uh, data from United Nations Environment Programme and International Resource Panel, whereby we're looking at material imports and exports by various uh, countries globally. So in the green infographics, it shows millions of tons of exports per country. And the orange shows the in million of tons of imports per country. The third visual indicates imports and exports by region. And as you can see through this, Europe and Asia Pacific as regions are importing vastly more than they are exporting. The contribution uh, has changed in recent decades with numerous countries shifting from uh, into being net importers of resources, but very few have switched to becoming net exporters. And in the new millennium, emerging economies such as China and India have become net importers, whereas not many have switched into becoming exporters. Um, you can see that actually United States and Australia increase their exports, particularly uh, because as a response to increasing prices and demand in raw materials. So from 1970 to 2017, the annual global extraction of materials tripled. Uh, per capita material demand also grew. Now projections are saying that following the current trends, the global material use could be more than double by 2060. The environmental impact of this shows that in 2017, natural resource extraction and processing accounted for about 90% global diversity loss, 90% water stress, and about 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. And with waste, uh, with the current trend, annual waste generation is projected to increase by 70% by 2050. These images show the impacts of human consumption and production having on the environment and the well-being of all living organisms. And in this last slide, you'll see uh, the Dandora landfill in Nairobi in Kenya. Now, this is a sprawling 30 acre dump that grows by 850 tonnes of solid waste a day. In comparison, in Singapore, in 2019, we produced almost 20,000 tonnes of solid waste a day. And if the current trends continue, by 2050, the waste is projected to increase by 70%. So, 
uh, given all this, how can we address some of these issues? Many see that the integration of the circular economy is one strategy that we can use. And in the circular economy, uh, the value of products, materials and resources is maintained in the economy for as long as possible. The generation of waste and pollution is actually designed out and the natural systems are regenerated. Our current economy is linear, whereby we extract materials, produce products, sell them, use them and dispose of them. All these processes generate negative externalities and accumulated over time, social, environmental uh, and economic impacts are catastrophic. And to address and avoid these risks, some bold and visionary business leaders are moving towards decoupling revenues from material inputs. You can see here is a butterfly diagram that depicts a circular economy. Uh, it's uh, adopted from Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And there are two spheres, the biosphere in green and the technosphere in blue. For the purpose of today's workshop, we're going to focus only the blue one, the technosphere. Their energy and all pr products are man-made. And as opposed to the biosphere, these are not being decomposed or absorbed by natural systems. Therefore, the responsibility for taking care of what's processing them is up to us. Circular economy is about optimizing the use of products while maintaining the highest value for as long as possible. And the loops you see there indicate circular economy, various circular economy strategies, whereby the smaller the loop, the higher the maintained value. And Note that designing for long-term use is ideal, while recycling in circular economy, circular economy model means recovery of molecules and atoms and actually leaves very little value uh, remaining. So how do we do this? Well, circular economy is about closing resource loops, mimicking natural ecosystems in such a way we can use and apply it when we uh, organize our society in our business. But we shouldn't be closing those loops just for the sake of it. We also have to take into account the social, ecological impacts of our actions and use renewable energy to make the transition towards social economy happen. Here we look at six, uh, six principles of circular economy. The materials are recycled endlessly in such economy. All energy is renewable or comes from sustainable resources. Ecosystems, human activities support ecosystems and rebuild the natural capital. All activities are supporting human health and well-being as well as contributing to flourishing healthy societies. So these are quite ambitious goals and it will take something to get there. But the good news is that we can do it. So decoupling natural resource use and environmental impacts from economic activity and hum human well-being is essential to aid the transition to a sustainable future. And the best part is that it is possible and doable. There are many benefits to enjoy by doing so. And by 2060, globally, we can reduce resource use by 25%. We can reduce greenhouse gases by 90% and we can increase economic activity by 8%. If circular e economy principles are implemented in four key sectors, cement, steel, plastic and aluminium, it could reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by 40%. And if we include food systems, then by 49%. Uh, what's the value of the circular economy to business? Um, if we look specifically at adopting such principles, um, your business could enjoy some of the following benefits. And I'll just run through the first few. The first is building in future resilience and competitive advantage. The second is to go beyond resource efficiency alone uh, and create new business opportunities. The third is to capture and retain additional revenues and reduce costs. Um, the fourth is to develop a trusted ecosystem of partners and expand your value chain. Uh, and the fifth is to explore business model innovation opportunities. 
So all that we've just uh, shared with you today, um, that is our reality in the current days. And it is highly complex and difficult to navigate. But today, we're going to simplify it and explore these ideas through play. It is quite common that using game-based learning techniques, uh, we can uh, adapt, uh, look at the model of the world. And this game was designed to spark discussion about today's society challenges and illustrate the need to recognize, see and understand complexity when addressing economic, social and environmental issues. It is this model that would allow a simplified uh, view of production uh, and consumption, look at supply chain and life cycles of products. The game emphasizes the points behind material criticality, resource use and systems thinking. And we invite players to, it invites players to reflect on resource production, usage and disposal and experiment with circular economy strategies in a safe environment. Let's play. <laughs> Yeah. 